back of a box, who can you trust? The trailers? So the game is a big fetch quest. Just follow the blue mark on the compass, grab the item you need, and run to the next. And just like in the original, I have to grab the crucifix from the graveyard to kill the vampire. In the vampire's mansion, you have to touch a bunch of balls to open a door. The camera doesn't seem to know what to do with itself, and the narrow halls really showcase the terrible controls. This place is a mess. At the end, you get to the first boss fight against the vampire. He even talks. What? I know what he said. All he said was bullshit. Literally. And yes, I mean literally. To quote oh yeah, because that... Of nerd said that that weak slide is yeah. So just as a turd is virtually a corpse, virtual high glide is virtually a. Sorry, that joke is just not way, working for me. The vampire's a pushover. So hand him his ass. Hand it to him. Just make sure to equip the crucifix. Then stand in front of him and swing. Yeah, kill that motherfucker. You get you get two. You get two. Well, yeah, yeah. I I get two. They're awesome. The band. As long as I don't have to play this cold and ugly game sober as you vicariously watch me as I hold a grudge with a hooker at the- Ah, oh, never mind. Back to the game. Killing the vampire gets you the super magic lamp. You need this to light up the next dungeon. In here, you get a dark sword which shoots Hadoukens at enemies. It makes the game a lot better. Well, it makes it slightly more tolerable. This dungeon doesn't even have a boss, just a couple of chests. You get Tool again and run to the next dungeon. One thing that really pisses me off is having to run back through the dungeon after getting the item. It doesn't warp you to the beginning like in Zelda. You have to run all the way back the way you came. And the later dungeons are long as hell. Some even have more than one level. Now you get the Spectacles of Truth, which let you find secret entrances in the next area. They also turn everything red. It makes the game look like you're playing an interactive colonoscopy, which would probably be more fun. Okay, I can't take this anymore. I'll finish it after lunch. Fuck Batman. All right, nice and refreshed. Let's finish this garbage. Wait. I have to set the date every time? What's the point of a clock then? What the shit? Uh, Where's my save file? Oh. The game didn't save? Oh, that's right. The battery must be dead. Because the Sega Saturn has those watch batteries inside. You have to replace them. Yeah, it's this battery right here. 2032. I'm done running errands. Time to run some virtual errands. Thankfully, you can just enter your world code and it'll be the same layout, but you still gotta start from the beginning. You only level up after completing an objective, so killing enemies is pointless. It's just for score. You can, however, use the points you earn to buy items at a store, but they're available for free in the game, so who gives a shit? The only item you should get is the Scroll of Detect. It shows all treasure chests on the map. I ended up getting back to where I was pretty fast. On top of that, I got better items than I had on my first playthrough, so that's cool, I guess. Actually, no, it isn't. The fairy armor looks real stupid. Honestly, any armor you get looks stupid on this guy, but it's powerful, so whatever. Okay, now I'm back where I left off, and it's at this point the game gets tedious as all hell. Every dungeon from here on out wraps all over the place. This is a volcanic cave. It's filled with enemies and fireballs. Even stepping on the lava marks hurt you. Oh, great, now I'm cursed. Once you find a cursed item, you can't unequip it. This really sucks because you need the dragon shield to kill the mad dragon boss. Oh man, I'm so dead. I don't want to have to run through this again. Do I have anything helpful? Scroll of herb? Here goes nothing. All right, that actually worked. I turned the cursed shield into an herb. Now to kick the dragon's ass. Suck on that, you fuck. So more advice, on top of the scroll of detect, also get the scroll of herbs so you can turn everything into herbs. Oh yeah, I forgot, I gotta run back through this hellhole. Oh, and great, I died. 
Wait, I'm back at the entrance? All this time, I've been running all the way back through the dungeon when I could just kill myself to teleport? Okay, well now I know. Luckily, I found that out before the next dungeon. It's not too crazy of a maze this time, but there's multiple levels to it. Each maze takes you to an elevator down. Another nifty trick I learned is on the map screen, you can turn your character. Just point him in the right direction and hold the run button. And most of the enemies stay out of your way, too. I'm killing this dungeon. Oh shit, minecart, whoa! What would a Hydlide remake be without ripping off something from Indiana Jones? All you need is the music from the first Tide Ride, and it's perfect. <laughs> the boss of this dungeon is the Evil Mage. He floats around twiddling his thumbs or something. He's easy, but you can only hit him when he touches the ground. Get comfy because he takes forever. Oh, come, come on. Will you just land so I can shoot your ass? Come on! fuck down. Get the fuck down. Get the fuck down. It feels like I'm talking to a cat. Get down. Get down. Get down. Get down here. Get down. <sighs> so after about a week and a half of him floating around, you beat him and get the next item. It's the tears of the earth. The world is crying. This game is so bad. You use them at this sign and you make the fortress of fucking solitude appear. I'm guessing that's where Superman 64 lives. This area looks confusing, but it's actually the easiest part to navigate. Just get to the center. The next part is what's annoying. It's a maze surrounding floating blocks. It's tedious, but eventually you get through and fight the boss. That I can't hurt? What? I'm hitting him with everything I got! This is bullshit! See, I hit him with that too. So it turns out, the only way to beat this boss, and the final one, is to find the Sword of Light. That's fine and all, but maybe I could have been told that? Nowhere in the game does it ever mention needing the sword, or really any item other than the ones you get from boss fights. In fact, the game holds your hand throughout, giving you a marker to the objective at all times. The sword can be found in that part with the floating blocks, in a random chest. So you have to use the scroll detect and check every goddamn chest until you find it. How was I ever supposed to know this? I had to look it up because I couldn't believe the game would just fuck me over like that. But it did. When I looked up that information, I learned something else, too. What? The knight's name is Jim. Jim. Jim, Jim the knight. Well, Jim doesn't sound like a knight. It sounds like a nerd. So you get the light Wait. sword. It sounds like a nerd. Oh. So you get the light sword, you hadouken the monster, the building falls down and the fairies save you. Wow, look at that. He looks like Poochie the rockin' dog going back to his home planet on the Simpsons. I have to go now. My planet needs me. This is the final level, thank God. Now you're actually playing a colonoscopy. It starts with you fighting the vampire again, but this time he has bats that swarm all over you. He's still kind of easy, you just can't bum rush him like last time. After him, you fight the mage, but this time he flies in two directions. Whoa. The whole world. After you beat these two assholes, it's on to the dragon guy, Viralis, which sounds like boner medication. It's the same shit. You keep hot duking him, he dies, you win. Cue that beautiful FMV, and the fairies turn back into the princess who looks like she just got off the set of a hair metal video. Wait, what? Did she just look at the camera? Is she related to the princess in Sonic 06? Thankfully, Virtual Hydlide is over. The credits play, and you get the list of shame set to some shitty stock JPEGs of the countryside. You wasted precious hours of your life to give yourself eye strain and motion sickness, and all you get is a fucking congratulations screen. Well, at least they spelled it right. <laughs> anyway, Virtual Hydlide is literally bullshit. Oh, that's right. Where'd I throw that book? Uh, well, whatever. Okay. I don't have an ending planned anyway, so... Th that joke, that didn't work. You just had to do that. Jesse, shut.
it's just me. Or it's just me. Or does anybody else like to see the angry video game nerd reviews reviewing modern games from now on? I don't think there will be enough retro games for the nerd to play. I mean, he could just basically get started with the PlayStation, the Dreamcast, the Sega Saturn and stuff. And after he reviews a certain amount of games, he can move on to PlayStation 2 and stuff. I mean, let's face it, the retro games are not going to be around forever. But yeah, it's a fine episode and you know? all. Has a has a set. Of course, I do not like the whole bullshit joke. It's just not worth it. The rest of the episode is all right. Hide, lied. It that sound doesn't make me want to puke. It, it just sounds funny. <laughs>